Hi, this is Mrs. Basin, and in this screencast we're going to talk about theoretical, actual, and percent yield calculations. So the first concept we need to talk about is theoretical yield. Um, theoretical yield is the maximum amount of product that can be produced in a reaction. So to calculate the theoretical yield, you use the limiting reactant, which means the reactant that runs out first, and the balanced chemical equation for the reaction. So the theoretical yield is a calculated value. So this is the most that that particular reaction could produce if everything went absolutely perfectly. The actual yield, on the other hand, is the amount of product that is actually obtained during the reaction. So the actual yield is what you actually get when you run the reaction. So this comes from a lab um, the lab experiment. So to get the actual yield, the actual yield is what you measure out on the balance in the lab. The difference between those two is called the percent yield. So the percent yield compares the actual yield to the theoretical yield. And what this tells us is the efficiency of a reaction. And just because you don't get a hundred percent yield doesn't mean that you did a bad job with your reaction. Some reactions just aren't efficient um, under certain conditions. So what this percent yield tells us is for that particular reaction run under those conditions, that's how efficient that particular reaction is. So let's look at an example problem so we can see how all of these things work together. So here's our example. So it says we have chlorobenzene, which is C6H5Cl, is used for a lot of different things like um, aspirins, dyes, disinfectants, those types of things. One way of producing chlorobenzene is in this reaction given below. So chlorobenzene is this substance right here. So this is chlorobenzene, so this is what we're producing. To do that, you react C6H6, which is benzene, um, and chlorine gas. So that's one way to produce it. And then you also get as another product, HCl. What we're concerned about, though, for this particular reaction is we're concerned about how much chlorobenzene could be produced and then how much actually is produced. So what it's saying is we're starting out with 36.8 grams of C6H6. So this is what we're starting with. And then it says there's an excess of Cl2. So that means there's plenty of that. That's not going to run out. So that's not going to limit how much product we're going to make. So the only amount we need to be concerned with is this 36.8 grams. Then it also tells us the actual yield is 38.8 grams. And again, this is for chlorobenzene. So notice when you're reading these problems, you have to be really careful about which numbers go with which labels or which substances. So this first 36.8 grams, that is our C6H6. But the second number they give us, the 38.8 grams, actually goes with our product, our C6H5Cl. So when you're, when you're working these problems, be very aware and very careful of what those numbers actually are. So we want to know first, what is the theoretical yield? So what's the maximum amount of our product that we could produce? And then what is our percent yield? So how, what's the comparison between the actual yield and the theoretical yield, or how efficient is this actual reaction? So what we have to do first here is we're going to first calculate our theoretical yield. So to do that, we're going to do a stoichiometry problem that starts with our reactant and goes to our product. So we're going to start with our 36.8 grams of C6H6. <clears throat> and then like we've done in class, our first step is to convert this to moles of C6H6. So one mole of C6H6 is 78.12 grams, and that's the molar mass from the periodic table. So that converts to moles. So now we can go from moles of C6H6 to moles of C6H5Cl. So we're going to do our mole ratio from the balanced equation. So this equation up here is balanced. It's a one-to-one -one ratio between our reactant and our product. So I'm going to put one mole C6H6 on the bottom, and then one mole C6H5Cl on the top. Okay, so that's our mole ratio. So now we're in moles of C6H5. Cl. Now we can go to grams of C6H5Cl. 
So to do that, I need a molar mass. So one mole of C6H5Cl, or chlorobenzene, is equal to 112.56 grams. And again, that molar mass comes from the periodic table. So when I go through, multiply across, divide top to bottom, I end up with 53.0 grams. So what that number there is, is that's my theoretical yield. So the theoretical yield, again, is a calculated value. It's always going to come from a stoichiometry problem like this. So this is the maximum amount of product we can get if this we were able to run this with 100% efficiency. What we find out, though, is that we only actually produced 38.8 grams. So to calculate our percent yield, we're going to take the actual over the theoretical times 100. So our actual has to be given because we're not actually performing this in the lab. If we were doing this in the lab, the actual would come from that number on the balance when you weigh your final product. But since we're not, we're given the actual yield. So our actual yield is 38.8 grams. And again, that has to be given if it's not actually done in the lab. And then our theoretical yield, this number up here, is 53.0. So that's the theoretical amount we could get. Then we're going to multiply that by 100 to give us a percent. So we end up with 73.2 percent. And we're still using sig figs just like always. We go back to what we were given up here. This had three sig figs so all of our answers are going to be rounded to three sig figs. So our percent yield for this particular one is 73.2 percent which is a fairly efficient reaction. That's a pretty good percent yield for this particular reaction.